Hi friends, I'm Rebecca. Welcome to Squintillions. Today I'm going through the first quarter update on the accounts that I opened as part of the Grow Your Dough Challenge. The Grow Your Dough Challenge involves putting $1,000 into the investments of your choice on the platforms of your choice at the beginning of the year. Note, I started a little late and I opened and funded my accounts for the Grow Your Dough Challenge at the end of January and the beginning of February. At the end of the 12 months, we'll see how the investments have progressed and which challenge participant has been able to grow the most dough. If you want to see more on how I started the challenge and made my investment choices, check out my other videos here on YouTube. For the challenge, I made investments across six different investing platforms. And I'll count down the investments in the order of how much money is in each account, with the one with the biggest value discussed last. All of the totals for the accounts were collected before trading began on April 11th, 2019. Number six, Acorns. Acorns is an incremental saving and investing platform. I'm doing something different with this account, so if you want the full details on that, check out the video I made about Acorns or have a look at my blog at squintillions.com. But briefly, instead of depositing $1,000, I deposited $400 when I opened the account. Then I began adding $50 per month so that I will have purposely deposited $1,000 in the account in a 12 month span. Additionally, I'm making incremental deposits. These are the roundups to the nearest dollar from purchases that I make on my credit card or through my bank account and those are being multiplied by two. Additional cash may be added to the account by getting a percentage back from purchasing items through companies that are partnered with Acorns and bonuses from their Refer a Friend program. I've only received a bonus for one referral so far. If you would like to open an Acorns account, please use my Acorns Refer a Friend link which I have included in the video description. We will then each receive $5 into our Acorns accounts. In the first quarter, my Acorns account has grown to $753.44. I deposited $500 directly. I seem to be making quite a lot of purchases as most of the rest is from my roundups. I have also earned $27.26 through the moderate level portfolio investment portion of my account, which is a 3.75% gain. I ranked Acorns the lowest of these accounts based on the total dollar amount in the account. However, in terms of the return, it could have been in second place. In my quarter two update, I'll probably change the ranking to be based on the investment gain per account rather than the total dollar amount in each account. Number five is Robinhood, the commission-free stock trading platform. My Robinhood account is the only one in which I have lost money. I had tried to mimic the industry percentages of an S&P 500 fund and then chose companies to invest in representing those industries. My choice in the consumer industry was the Kraft Heinz Company, or KHC, which I bought four shares of right before the company's share price dropped when they announced that they were reducing their dividends. I later sold the shares and lost $60 in the process. In its place, I invested in another consumer-related company, Penske Automotive Group. They still have decent dividends, but it looks like they have a better chance of their stock price increasing. 
I have received some dividends in the account, which has helped to stabilize the total value of the account. I explain most of this in much more detail in my Robinhood app investing video. And I also go through the buying and selling process in my Robinhood app guide video, which is meant for newcomers to the platform. If you don't have a Robinhood account, check the description below to use my refer a friend link. When you open your account, we will each receive a free stock. The value of my Robinhood account is $973.50, down 2.65% from when I opened it in February. Number four is my Capital One Certificate of Deposit. The 12 month CD in which I deposited $1,000 at 2.7% APY is currently doing better than my stock experiment in Robinhood. With the interest I've earned so far, the total value of the CD is $1,004.31. Number three is Fundrise. Fundrise is a crowdsourced real estate investment platform. It is meant for a longer term investment time frame than is afforded by the Grow Your Dough Challenge, as many real estate projects take more than one year to complete and earn revenue. I plan to keep my Fundrise account longer than the one year of the challenge. If you haven't heard of Fundrise, have a look at my Fundrise walkthrough video. And if you decide to open an account, you can use the Fundrise Refer a Friend link that I've put in the description below. And we will both have the 0.15% advisory fees waived for 90 days. The value of my Fundrise account is $1,009.38. So that's $9.38 gained since opening the account. Number two is Lending Club a platform that connects borrowers and investors. I was surprised at Lending Club getting second place as I was worried about defaults on loans on the platform affecting my balance. Perhaps I haven't been invested long enough for that to be an issue. This is another account that requires a longer term commitment as the loans are for 36 months and 60 months. I plan to stick with my account for five years minimum. The total value in my Lending Club account is $1,021.30, so $21.30 earned. In the top spot is eTrade, my online brokerage account. This account reflects how I typically choose my investments. So it is reaffirming that it is leading the group for the investments I have tried for the challenge. The total value of my E-Trade account is $1,128.88. With an 11.88% total gain and an increase in value of $119.42 once the fees have been subtracted. Let's talk some overall numbers. The total earnings on my investments in the six Grow Your Dough Challenge accounts has been $164.63. Adding that to the total amount of money I have invested in the challenge so far, which is $5,708.18, I reach a total value in my accounts of $5,827.81. This calculates to a 2.88% gain on my Grow Your Dough Challenge investments. This is just slightly better than the rate on my Capital One CD in this challenge, as I mentioned earlier at 2.7%. The percentage gain is not better then if I had just invested that $5,708.18 in the S&P 500 index fund, ticker SWPPX, 
on February 1st, 2019 at $41.42 per share. And if I had kept it until the date I checked on all my investments, April 11th, 2019, when it was at $44.39 per share. The dollar gain there with some rounding off would be $409.20, equaling a 7.17% gain and a total value of $6,117.38. If I only had a few months to be invested in something, just dropping that money into the index fund would have been a more lucrative investment choice. We'll see how the actual gain on my challenge accounts compares to the potential gain from the index fund as the year goes on. Will my investments be able to catch up? So we are done with the financial investment part of the challenge, but I added a bonus. I decided to dedicate $1,000 to myself this year for growing my blogs and my YouTube channels and learning how to make improvements. So far, I have spent $340.92 on my social media sites and my educational journey on blogging and creating videos. Besides Squintillions, I have a music blog called You Make My World Rock, which I started about three years ago. I took a break from it last year and I didn't publish any content. Then in February, I completed a redesign of the site and have begun posting content on it again. The main expenses I have incurred this year were the costs associated with setting up Squintillions and upgrading You Make My World Rock with WordPress, buying a logo for You Make My World Rock, and the registration fee for an upcoming WordPress conference I will be attending called WordCamp. I also just purchased a Boya by M1 lavalier microphone in order to improve the sound on tutorials that I record on my phone and computer for future videos. I have tried to keep my educational costs to a minimum by reading advice from bloggers and watching YouTube videos on how to accomplish the things I want to do and learn. I've read a few useful books on content creation, social media use, and investing too. A helpful book on learning how to get started on YouTube has been this one. YouTube Secrets, the ultimate guide to growing your following and making money as a video influencer. I recommend the book and the accompanying YouTube channel, Video Influencers, for anyone getting started on their own YouTube channel. If you've had a YouTube channel for a while and you've kept on top of changes to the platform, there probably isn't much new material for you. While my goal is not to become a video influencer, I would like to reach a broad audience so that my videos can connect with the people who I hope can learn something from my tutorials and my experiences. I have yet to make any money from blogging or YouTube apart from just one Acorns referral bonus. Looking forward, the good news is that recently I was approved to be an iTunes affiliate, which is great for my music blog. And I also just became an Amazon affiliate. I am hopeful that these two programs will help me getting started making some side income on my social media sites so that I can at least cover the costs of creating them. I am also hoping I will learn some useful tips and tools at WordCamp to help me improve my content and format of my blogs and allow me to grow the number of site views and subscribers. You can help me grow my following on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button now. And comment below on your favorite investment platforms or any platforms you would like to see a tutorial made about. Thanks for watching.